Peace, peace. So it's touch this one. And do another video on the Maroons and Sierra Leone, man. Because you know what? It's a lot of history on this, man. And in two or three videos, one video, one hour, can I, could not cover all of the research that I got from this, man. So I'm going to stay on this for a minute. Because this right here is going to tell you a lot. Then I'm going to come back to North Carolina because... See, people don't understand, man. They don't know that it was Indian slaves in North Carolina, but they don't know that the Indian slaves was Negroes, okay? They don't know that. See, that's the thing. People keep saying, all right, well, they was Indian then. They, was, they mixed in with the African. No, the majority of the Indians in the South was Negroes, and they, the, after the three or four or five Africans that they had on a plantation of hundreds of Indians mixed in with the Aborigines here. That's it. Maybe. And that wasn't in all cases because it wasn't enough people to go around to mix in with everything. You understand what I'm saying? Maybe, you know, somebody got that DNA, they might have mixed in with somebody along. But I don't even think that. So let's get with this dude, Thomas Phoenix, because, you know, this is how you do research. Right, I'm going to show you something. Now, when you do this research, it's best to cross-reference different articles. Never read one article and assume that's what you're looking for. You have to read numerous different articles as well as conflicting stuff to gather up enough information to form a point of view. Okay? I don't speak the Queen, the King, English the best. I'm going to get through this stuff. And you will possibly learn something at the end of this. All, the visual, all these videos are educational purposes. That's why I don't go hard with the debate. And they're all opinions of the Atonians. With that being said, let's get with it. So we got Thomas Peters. All right. It's one article I got on Thomas Peters. Uh, I'm going to show you everything first. Another article on Thomas Peters. Another one. And another. Alright, so let's start with Whitby. Alright. Thomas P Peter's Revolutionary. They say Thomas Peter's born Thomas Porter. Now check this out. Now check this out. They saying that he was born in Africa, right? But look at his name. Now look, Thomas Peter's born Thomas Porter, which is an English name. On um, June 25th, 1738, in 1792, was one of one of the black. Now check this out too. Let me put it on something, right? When 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 most a lot of black people come from Africa, they still got African names. So why, if he was born Thomas Porter, then why would he? What, where's his original? If he was from Nigeria, he was from the Igbo tribe. Then what was his original name? You understand what I'm saying? Because I don't see. That somebody from, now, if he was born Thomas Point, all right, I'm, I'm going to just go and show you something when, when I'm cross references. All right, so it's a thir 1738 to 1792. One of the black loyalties, founding fathers, one of the nations of Sierra Leone and West Africa. Peter's along with David George, Moses Wilkins, Cato Perkins, and Joseph Lynch, with all European names, were influenced by black Canadians who recruited African settlers in the province of Nova Scotia, the colonization of Sierra Leone. Peter himself, a former African American African American slave, uh, 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 claimingly, I mean assumingly, which I know he's an Aborigine, but I'm gonna get into that. It said who fled the province of North Carolina with the British during the um American Revolutionary War. So he said he he fled from North Carolina during the Evolutionary War. Say so he served as a black loyalist in the black company, I mean black company of pioneers and later became prominent black colonial leader in the Freetown. Thomas Peters had been called the first African American hero. Peters like e Eli Johnson and Joseph Jenkins Roberts of Liberia is considered an African American founding father of every nation. Now check this out. Now I say early life. Thomas Peters was born in Nigeria. West Africa to the Yoruba your Yoruba tribe, evil people clan. All right, it's saying enslavement. The 1760, a 20 year, a 22 year old Thomas Peter was captured by slave traders and sold as a slave to colon, colonial America on a French slave ship, the Henry Quatra, 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 or whatever. It's say upon the 
upon arrival in North America, Peter was sold to the French owners of the French Louisiana. Okay, French Louisiana. Let's, let me see something real quick while we on that, just to show y'all something. All right, because I like to do this, man. So I like to do it. All right, so let's get this. All right, so France right here. France right here. So France came all the way from here, traveled all the way here. All the way from here, came all the way around here, snatched some people, because he's saying from Nigeria. How far is the Nigerian going to wander outside this land? This landmass is huge itself. This landmass is probably the size of Texas. So how far is a person that lives in this on, on this land going to travel outside of this continent? You understand what I'm saying? So they travel all the way from France, grab these people from Nigeria, and then just came all the way across here. Now look, came all the way across here to Louisiana. You will be a fool to believe this stuff, man. You will be a fool to believe this stuff. To come, so look how far that is. From Nigeria, all the way across the Atlantic Ocean. All the way across. All the way across to come this way. You understand? And I think that the French was coming through Canada. That's how I believe that they was coming. I mean, which I got some doubts about that because they was warring with the English. So I don't think, I want to, I just want to know how they kind of both took the same or separate routes. I don't think at this time the English was even coming to this location. They were staying up in this area. They didn't get into Georgia, remember, until the 1700s when it was named after King George. Because I believe after Carolina or after Charlton, say Charleston, um, then you got Charlotte. After Charlotte, they came over here and named the land as Georgia. Okay, so that wasn't until the 1700s. So that shows you that the, that the English was only up, um, up and down these routes for like the 1500s. They didn't, it took them centuries to get inside here. You understand? It took them centuries to get inside here. You understand? So to believe that, oh yeah, they was down here, they warned one another. They was not, they was not coming in contact with these people. Okay, when they took Florida, because you you read when you read, you see the English taking the states from the Spanish and from the French. Okay, as you read this and you do your research, you will find that the English was taking these states from the French and the Spanish. Okay, that's what the Louisiana Purchase and all that shit was about. Okay, they kicked the French out and gave the French. I believe they gave the French something. But remember, when they took Cuba from the Spanish, they gave the Spanish, I believe, Louisiana. That's why uh, Louise. That's why they had Spanish in Louisiana, or they, they, I guess, the Spanish quarters or whatever they call it, the French quarters, or whatever. Though, but that was one of the treaties. You gotta look that up yourself. All right. So let's get back to the, let's get back to the main topic. All right. So, boom, so all right. So it says. Peter tried to escape three times before being sold to an Englishman. Now, I just told you that the French and the English was not getting along. So how did they sell? How were they coming in contact with these people like that? And how far and where? What Englishman? Where was he at? Where was he at? Because if they was only in Louisiana, they don't show you the French going. It doesn't show you. The French in none of the other states, not in, not in Carolina, not in Georgia, not in Virginia, not in none of them states. You only see them up and down the Mississippi River. You only see that you see them in the ground of Great Lakes. But well, remember, when they when when they came across and conquered that, they had to go. So you got to understand the history. Everybody think that all these European, all these European countries was just going to Africa, grabbing. I know they was coming here to this land first, and when they seen that they can be um create treaties and control of people in the land, the people in the land was working for them. And people don't even fucking understand most of this history. Because you gotta do further research. You cannot do I mean, you can't even do a college level one hundred course of history and learn any of this stuff I'm teaching. None of it. You're gonna learn the generic terms and you're gonna learn that all slaves was African when you learn that ten so it, it, out of every ten slaves here in the U United States Nine of them was aborigines. Okay? So what would that tell you? Okay. Crickets. Or, or how they say drop the mic. Southern colonial, probably Campbell, is say a, an immigrant Scotsman who had settled on Cape Fear River of Wilmington, North Carolina. 
okay so this is just one story I, I mean, I'm not going to go all into it but you can check that out because I'm going to read another one I'm going to read another article and the other article going to take us a little further but just remember they say we're born Thomas Porter but Thomas Porter is not a Nigerian name if he was born that it would say he was born something else Thomas Peters is I mean Thomas Porter is not a Nigerian name see this is just how people easily get confused with this let's go to the next one alright Thomas Peters got similar similar hmm, 1738 1792 born in Africa and enslaved in America Thomas Peters best known for his influence in settling Canadian blacks in the African colony of Sierra Leone there is now remember the reason only reason why they wanted to leave the only reason why Thomas, matter of fact, you know what? Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. I missed something, Key. I missed. Sorry about that, so I want to go back here. All right, boom. Because I gotta, I gotta show you. We gotta get up to the point that when he left and went to um, Nova Scotia, for you to get an understanding. Of it. I just can't just. I have to show you what led him. How did he leave North Carolina and get to Nova Scotia the first place? All right, so I'm gonna have to read this whole thing and then start cross referencing with other. All right. So, boom, 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 boom. All right, so here, 1776, Peters fled his own owner, Flour Mill, near Wilmington, at the start of the American Revolution War, and joined the Black Pioneers. You got to look at this. The Black Pioneers is a whole other chapter of information. It said the Black Loyalties Union made up a runaway African American slave. Now, remember, most of the runaways was Aborigines because they knew the fucking land. No African gonna come here and run away because they don't know what's out there. They don't know what's out there, so they just gonna come. So they, so you wanna come now? If you're not indigenous to this land, you'll see something like a fucking spider. If you're not indigenous to this land, run back and run back to the colonies. Like man, fuck this shit, man. I'm not like 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 you see you start hearing animals hollering at night or whatever. You don't know what that is. The only people who want who gonna run away and deal with that shit is indigenous people. You understand what I'm saying? From my research of me hearing on these about these colonies, these colonies wasn't that bad. It's just that the people who was there didn't want to be there. They like, man, fuck this. I'm indigenous. I don't want to be on these. I don't want to be on these plantations. You understand what I'm saying? And that's what uh, some of them was indentured. Some of them was enslaved. See, a lot of the indentured servants was the people you seen was in the house. And a lot of the slaves were the people that was in the field. Okay, so when you see a lot of indentured servants, you see a lot of them. Them was the remember most of the women they kept as indentured servants. That's what I'm saying. People, you need to step your you need to step your research up, man, and stop coming to me with this bullshit. All right, so it's black loyalty runaway America of uh, uh, Aborigine American slaves. The British had previously promised freedom in exchange for supporting the war effort against the colonies that formed the United States. Many former slaves joined the British after the United States had been established as a nation. Therefore, many were illegally qualified to remain as American slaves. Peter rose to the ranks of sergeant in, in the region. region, region. Now, and think about this too. Think about this. Think about this too, right? Think of this too. Let's see something. <sighs> Let's see something. Hold up. Let's hold up for one second. All right. So, if he was born, check this shit out, right? Check this out. That means he would have had to have been able to speak three different languages, right? So, you know, I'm not, you know, Nigerians are well versed in, 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 um, in language. I'm not going to sit here and say they they not, right? But understand this. At the age of 22, right, he would have had to learn French. So, because he, he, was, he was captured by the French. He didn't have to learn French. Then he was transferred to English or Scotland or whatever. So then he would have had to learn English. Okay. Now, now all that in that span, right? Now I'm not saying that that couldn't be done. If you if you trying to survive, you want to adapt to your environment. And, that, and I'm not going to sit here and say you're not. So you're going to learn stuff faster out of a, a, a fear out of a fear that you need to learn. You ain't got time to really be bullshit because this is life and death. So I'm not going to sit here and say that. So I'm going to put that out there. So all right. So um, all right, so 
say rolls to the sergeant in a, in a regiment and say that he was twice wounded in battle during his time. Thomas was married to Sally Peters, a slave from South Carolina. He had a son called John, born in 1781, and the daughter of Clara, say born in 1771. There is a possibility that Sally and Peter were once, once slaves together in South Carolina. Now they can say he was slaves in North Carolina. Okay, but now they're saying South, but this is what I'm saying. Say, and they reunited during the war. Okay, so now, all right, boom. Resettlement in the province of Nova Scotia, British Canadian. They say, after the war, Peter and other former African American slaves were taken to the British, um, were taken by the British to Nova Scotia with the loyal, with the loyalists were there, where they stayed from 1783 to 1791. Initially, they, they, no, I'm sorry. Initially, after being excavated from New York, all right, so they, we got more people who came through New York, okay, because New York was a port. It's a, there, it's a Thomas Loyalist ship has been blown off course and the crew temporarily settled in Bermuda. Eventually, Thomas Peters, now, nah, nah, hold up, all right, see, I mean, listen. I'm trying to see something. Remember, Bermuda is in the middle of the, uh, the damn ocean. And so, all right, so I just was trying to gather my thoughts. Where the hell is Bermuda at before I can go for it further? All right, so blown off course. and saying the crew temporarily settled in Bermuda. So eventually, Thomas Peters and his family settled in, and and not and and, 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 and Royal Nova Scotia. My bad. Peters and his fellow black pioneers, Murphy Still, petitioned the government for land. Say both Murphy Still and Thomas Peter had developed a friendship during their service to the Black Pioneer. Petition to set in Sierra Leone Colony, West Africa. Say Peter became disheartened when he saw as broken promises of the land by the British government and decided to travel to England to demand the land promises to him and others. Peter gathered the signatures of more of African American settlers in Nova Scotia and New Brunswick. He said before getting funds to travel to London, he said with the risk of being re enslaved and convinced by the government to settle the blacks in Nova Scotia. Elsewhere, say in 1791, Peters went to London where he helped convince the royal government, say with the help of Granville Sharp, to allow the settle, to settle a new colony in Sierra Leone that was to be Freetown. Sierra Leone, Peters was what was well received during the trip to London. Say he was introduced in some notable. No, some notable people there by his former command, say General Henry Clinton, who was particular, I mean, politically, I mean, ah, I can't get that word, I'm sorry, y'all, say out of favor, and say particular, I mean, say, I don't know what the fuck going on, sorry, y'all, and say out of favor, say it was decided in London that Peters and the naval officer John Clarkson, the brother of the English abolitionist, abolitionist Thomas Clarkson, Thomas Clarkson would assist in recruiting blacks to settle in Sierra Leone. I'm sorry about that. Sometimes when I make mistakes like that, that shit make me fuck the whole or make me mess anything up. I will read. So, so all right. So we see what's pretty much going on. All right. So we seeing that. Thomas Peters, they saying first he came from Nigeria, you know, first he was in Nigeria, then the French captured him, then the French brought him to um, Louisiana, then from Louisiana they sold him to an Englishman, then from being sold to an Englishman, he somehow, you know what, that's something I, you know what, maybe I overread that, but nonetheless though, we get to do that in the next passage, all right, but nonetheless it say Sierra Leone, um, it say after convincing over 1100 of the 3,500 American blacks to return to Africa, they say in 1792 they arrived at St. George Bay Arbor. Legend, legend has it Thomas Peter led the newly named Nova Scotia in the shore, signing an old Christmas hunt. They say, though most likely, no, they say, though most likely it was other more influenced re religious leaders. Peter soon became at odds with the newly established gov governor, John Clarkson, and he claimed himself to the speaker generally of Annapolis, An 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 Royal 
Nova Scotia settles, although he received support from influence from influential figures among the previous settlers like Abraham Elliot Griffin and Henry Beaver Hunt. Beaver Hunt. Beaver Hunt. That's a fucked up name. So eventually the overwhelming majority of Nova Scotia chose John Clarkson as they as their true leader and Peter became disheartened. So he was hated. So they say soon after Peter died of malaria. Now he died of malaria. Wow. They say in Freetown during the first rainy season. They say in 1792. Alright, so that tells you. So go. That pretty much tells you his life. But my thing is somebody put on there that he was from. That he was from Nigeria. Which they said in here too. But I'm going to go to the next one. Let's see this. So this pretty much says the same thing. Um, but it doesn't say he was from Nigeria. But this one doesn't say nothing about him. And they got sources, see? They got sources right here. But, you know, I, I assume that whoever passed that around said he was from Nigeria. Because it was another, um, somebody else said the same thing. Like, a no matter of fact, look. This one. Alright, so. Thomas Peters. Now they say 18th century right here. Alright, but they say throughout the Atlantic world, Atlantic world, enslaved men were able to gain freedom through military services. Say Thomas Peters displayed leadership during the, Ameri the American Revolution in Nova Scotia, Canada, and, and in Sierra Leone, West Africa. So when the British offered freedom to slaves. Alright, so that's how he got his, his uh, freedom. All right, say who fled their rebel? So all right, so the ones, all right, so check it out. So the runaway slave because they knew the land, and then was it just because they were slaves? Remember, you you honestly think that these people was 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 African? You honestly think they was Africans? You honestly think an African can run away? And remember, it's different things going on here. It's a totally different environment. Even though that, even if it is another hot environment, you got things that's different. You have like like they get said he died of malaria when he went over there because there was things over there that you have to get used to. So that'll tell you something else though. But people in America get malaria too because the mosquitoes is is, is terrible in certain parts of the Caribbean and that and elsewhere. So it doesn't just come from Africa, but that's what they were led you to believe. But understand this too. Um basically I'm just trying to prove that he wasn't a Nigerian, that he was from here. You understand what I'm saying? Because and then, and then I tell you another tell, right? Nigerians wasn't wasn't enslaved by the English heavily like that, okay. And when you read the story, when you read history, like you go look look up little articles, like well, now nah, that's something else, right? There. But um, it shows you. It say the British followed in eighteen. Now they tell you, check this shit out. They tell you that most of let me see something. I think it was this one. Let's say colonization of Africa. Say between 1870 and 1900, they say African faced European imperialist aggression, they say diplomatic pressure, and military invasion, and eventually conquest of the colonization. Say at the same time, African society put up various forms of resistance against the attempts to colonize their country. They say imposed foreign um, domination. By the early 13th century, however, much of Africa, except Ethiopia, Liberia, has been colonized by European power. So they telling you that now. So think of it like this, right? If they was already, if they was already in this country from the 1500s, and imagine how many men it took to take over this land and to go in Africa at the same time. And Africa is more vast, right? Because think of it like this, right? They could not get all the way to think that to be a fool and not see see when you when you doing this you gotta you gotta really look at the map and we know that this shit is off it might the map might be much closer than what we think it is you know what I'm saying it might be much closer than what we think it is but just think about this like like all right all of this right here it will be considered the West Coast. All of this in the West Coast, all right. So, you see all of this? You see all of this right here? 
that they show all of this is fucking desert. This is a desert land. Now understand it. Now understand it, right? Think of this, right? All of this is the fucking desert. Okay? Without modeling technology, I don't think people can live out here effectively like that. Okay? This, this is the desert. Look at it. Now, unless there's lakes and rivers and shit that, that got fresh waters and, and fresh streams, I would, you know, it's it just like I said, you have to look at, you have to look at time from history and think about it like this. If this is dirt, this is unfertile land, no grass is growing, no vegetation is growing, meaning that the, obviously the land is not fertile here or the soil is not fertile or whatever. And maybe I could be wrong about that, but from my limited um, understanding of, of growing and, and doing no farm work or whatever. I understand you got to put work minerals into the soil for the soil to be fertile for it to even grow vegetation or whatever. But nonetheless, though, this, all of this is fucking desert if you look at it, right? Then you get this little part right here from here all the way across here to Ethiopia, and then you get some of these countries down here. Okay, so you see all like land, you see like this would be considered jungle and all that, right? But if you look at this, all right, so they all on the east. I, actually, I just went off the course or whatever, but I was just looking at this right here and showing you that this is all desert. We know that this wasn't desert before. We know that land, people like it, didn't have it, this place, and this probably was like a, a large vegetation area, but something happened or whatever. And like I said, you, we don't know how far. We know, this is the, we know that the map is all. We know that, okay, that Europe is... Europe can fit into um, South America. They said two and a half times, man. So if they showing you Europe all huge and shit, like bigger than every all the continent, but they can only fit South America twice. But nonetheless, don't be a fool. Don't think that people, they, all these continents, you got Germany, they was coming and snatching Africans going over here. Ireland, um, United Kingdom, all these people's coming all the way down here. Grabbing people from the coast and they shooting across here, yeah, and they warming at the same time. So you know that's just going off a little topic with the Thomas Peters. Um, but let me see something. This was another one. So, let's check. Let's shift to this. No, nah, hold up. This I think I already put this one. Two. Let's see. Let's see. This the first one I started. Alright, so let me just read this and I'm gonna be done with this one and I'm gonna continue with my continuation on the Maroons of Syria. Alright, and they just remember this too, right? Just in case. Alright, let me just I'm gonna just go back into a little bit more of this just to let you know something. All right. So we read Thomas Peters again, young black soldier, three times Sierra Leone. They say legend has legend has given Thomas Peter a birth, a noble birth in West Africa. Okay, I right, say when when he he was supposedly kidnapped as a young man and bought as a slave to the American to the American colonies. Now, all right, now we already know that they was kidnapping people from here, but they're telling you that the French was grabbing people. So I already touched on. It. You have to do really. You have to look and see when how was the French grabbing people and then bringing them here to. It just doesn't make no sense. It just doesn't make no sense. How you gonna bring? slaves to a land you might not make it, or you never been at you don't know what the fuck is going on or whatever and, and, and you're not really truly really colonized because the, the french they they had colony col they had colonial colony they had colony set up but it wasn't like it was more they was they got along honestly from my stories they were saying that the french was actually um, more like they was more cooler with the the Indian than any of the other people, you know. What I'm saying I just like I said, I don't know what I, I, what what they what they claim to be cool or what they claim to be like people who got along. But this is what I read. This is what I read from the information. All right, so say so it's kidnapped as a young man from West Africa. Not saying where at West Africa. This is his biography. Um, let's see what's the say. Say the art, you know, I don't say nothing, no fun. So, nigga, that number here. All right, so, boom, they say he he supposedly kidnapped as a young man, brought out the slave to the American colony. The earliest documentary, they say evidence placed him in 1776 as, as the 38 year old slave 
of William Campbell in Wilmington, North Carolina. So in 1776, he was 30. Remember, they said he was kidnapped when he was 22. When he was 22, right? They said he was just one of the other articles. They don't say it in this one, but the other articles say he was kidnapped when he was 22. So that's 16 years later, 38. So that means that 16 years later, he had to adapt to all these different environments. So, all right. So it says, Thirty year old slave to work Campbell and Williamson in North Carolina. It said in that year, encouraged by the proclamation issued by the government, Lord Denmore of Virginia in 1775, promising freedom to rebel on slaves who joined the loyal the loyalist forces. Alright, so so it's saying that he joined, remember we already touched on this, but I'm just enlightened, just going just going back over a little bit more. All right, so with the uh, lawyers for, say, Peter fled Campbell's plantation and enlisted, and so he fled the plantation and enlisted in the black pioneer. So it was that easy for him to fled the plantation, and he knew how to get to Virginia that easy. If he was in North Carolina, how the hell he know the sense of direction if he'd been on his plantation, and he's not supposed to be indigenous. And that's the thing that's bugging me out, that all these people, that come from the deep Africa and all that. As big as America is and big as these these um states are, you think people was just taking these travels like that unless you knew the land. Because along the way you had to eat plants and certain things that was growing. So you had to know certain things. You had to be indigenous to the land. So anybody that ran away was more likely indigenous because you're not gonna run away if you don't know the environment. You don't know the environment. Maybe some of them, maybe a few of the Africans, supposedly, or whatever you believe. But I don't even believe. I don't. I believe all the runaway slaves of Aborigine. And until you prove to me how many people they brought here, then you can't prove to me at all that anybody was brought here. Because from my research, you're, t you're, you're telling me there's Indian slaves at the same time that they're supposed to be African slaves. And this shit is this shit is not talked about. Like you, you okay? So you forgot to leave that out in, in the history. You forgot the, and then, then if you do put it in history, you try to show that it was in separate parts, like trying to say, oh, well, the Indians was a slave, because the story that they tell you the Indians, you'll think that these people was in North Dakota or somewhere else. No, these people was in the South. They was in the South. So then you got to read guys of your, 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 the way you thought of this shit, or the way you was taught this history. All right, so he rebelled, and so he left the plantation, and say, and say, and enlisted in the Black Pioneers in New York. So, he wasn't from here. He was from. He was in North Carolina, and somehow, and somehow joined the Black Pioneers in New York. It's saying 1790 in response to a new invitation to rebel on slaves and place them under the British protection, whether they wished to bear arms for the crown or not. Say, a 26-year-old woman, Sally, from Charleston, South Carolina, appeared in a British camp, and she she too joined the Black Pioneers in the service. She met she met um, Peter. So this is when you hear all of these abolists or whatever, or these Black loyalists. These are people who were slaves that was joining these that was joining these groups that the Europeans was allowing them. But remember, at that point in time, man, you done forgot your culture, forgot who you are. You're just trying to survive at this point in time, all right? So, all right, it said, period, in a British camp, and she said, all right, so, all right, so, it said, Peters, it said, home, by 1777, was promoted to the I said, and then we read that. It says, when a provisional peace agreement was signed in Paris on 30, I mean, on, on November 30, 1782, the Peters were... Now, remember, I think when this peace agreement... Now, look, when the Paris peace agreement... All right, so let me read it to you. Say, November 30, 1782, they say the Peters, the Peters were in New York awaiting if, if that, if excavation. The ship carrying them safely went to the Bermuda, went to Bermuda in 1783 and then to Anna... And, 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 and po I can't keep it. And the Atlas, and the Atlas, um, Royal Nova Scotia, is it where they disembarked in May? Disembarked, remember, disembarked, they left. They say in May 1784, they say they were among 3,500 free black loyal that took them to Nova Scotia after the revolution. Uh, you know, they said that he went there, he didn't like it. They started a, um, I guess, like some type of protest or whatever. All right. So, you see right here, 
that it's a lot of things that's it's inconclusive. But one thing they tell him you that in the other article that he may have met his wife because they were on the same same slave plantation. But in this one, it's telling you that he was in North Carolina and she was in South Carolina. Okay, so that's just little stuff you gotta look for. Charleston, South 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 Carolina, right? All right, so you know, like I said, that's just little stuff you gotta look for. But I got something for y'all, just for the people, just to back or support my theory that it was Indian slaves in Carolina. So the stories can be twisted along the way, according to the imagination of the person who reading it, or because sometimes they run into brick walls and they make assumptions and they go only only you are only make an assumption according to your level of education or what you've been told. You cannot assume something that you can't conceive or something that haven't you never have thought or research. So this is what I'm conceiving, all right? Give me a second. Alright. So it's a rival of the Englishman in North Carolina. From Richard or for whatever the fuck his name is named it. The discourse and concernment of the Western paint. Alright, so alright, so let me just move it down to here. They say when English settlers arrived in the low country reign in late sixteenth in late sixteenth century, they encountered American Indian grouping. I mean, you know, including the Wando whatever the whatever it ends right here with the defense. See, many of these indigenous people have already been exposed to European, though Spanish and French exploration, and their population was so called decimated. All right, they say to those survived, engaged, strategized with the the Carolina settlers, they say in trade and military alliance as well. Now, look, remember <laughs> now, even though he joined the black loyalists, but listen to this. It say those who survived engaged in strategically with Carolina settlers in trade and military alliances, as well as conflict or open warfare. Alliances of rivals shifted over time, creating a complex web of collaboration and exchange, as well as animosity between American Indians and Carolina settlers. It say slavery continued to tension between low country native groups and Carolina settlers while attempting to replicate the bar the barbarian 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 system of plantation agriculture depending on enslaved African there they go. It's a Carolina settlers also enslaved significant number of American Indians. Settlers traded guns and other manufactured goods. I mean other manufactured goods to American Indians for their skin and slaves, creating a cycle of debt dependence of the I mean, often led to European trade of you they say bar that bar barbadians barbadians. I can't pronounce that shit. Barbadians were especially involved in developing the American Indian slave trade in the Carolina to the West Indies. All right, so now listen to that. The American, now I bet you they wasn't in the slave trade initially going to the West Indians because what did we read? Check this out. I keep all notes up here. Let me see something. What was we at? I keep all things up there when we doing this research. The Maroons were the escaped slaves. They ran away from the Spanish owned plantation when the British took the Caribbean island in from Spain in 1655. Okay? So they took it in 1655. So they're telling you here. I say while well, Native Americans were familiar with the low country, say landscape, they say could could often escape from Carolina plantations. They could eat they could not easily escape from West Indian plantations. Other American Indians was held captive in Carolina. By the seventeen twenties the Carolina census included fifteen hundred enslaved American Indians out of an estimate total population of 17,000. Now, check this shit out. Now, I don't see that. I need to find that census. I need to find that Carolina census and, and find that. I, I cannot find it. 
And most of the time you find this the writing is so you can't it's not even worth reading. It's just something to show somebody. Like, look, look, this, okay, I got the Carolina senses, but I can't exp I can't understand it, neither can you. Okay? Um, but we know in the seventeen ninety census that if they they saying it's fifteen hundred, they saying by seventeen twenty. Now we can just play with this number right here. We can just assume that out of seventeen hundred, how many of them they was calling Africans because we know according to the seventeen ninety census that they was not splitting people up. Okay? And all this this relates to Thomas Peters not being probably a a Nigerian. Okay? This is all leading back to that. Okay? Because where was he at? In Carolina. Where did they say say look, it's a low they say landscape and could easily often escape from Carolina plantation. They could not easily escape from West African I mean West Indian plantation. It say other American Indians were held captive in Carolina. Okay? So it say say so this is in the seventeen hundreds. Okay? 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 Um it say anger by land encroachment, trade abuse, debt, and enslavement, and enslavement, it say a confederation of American Indians attacked English settlers, it say in plantation during the Yamasee War, 1715, 1777. Now they's telling you, now look, they saying, now check this shit out. Check this out. Check this out, y'all. Check this out. Not one time they said anything about any Africans bought there. Okay, now this is going off. I'm gonna continue. The um Morocco, the um the Maroons and the um Sierra Leone connection, but I just gotta connect people who doesn't do research, cause you assume that all slaves and check this shit. Are they gonna tell you that the Yamasis somehow? <clears throat> cause remember the Yamasis were the Seminoles too, or somewhere in in reverse like that. The Yamasis somehow combined with the Seminoles. Now when they say slaves, they're gonna tell you, oh these was Africans. There wasn't no, no, was no Indian. They, they were African. And I say, angered by land encroachment, trade abuse, debt, and enslavement, a confederation of American Indians attacked the English settlements and plantations during the Yamasee War, 1715, 1777. So, how long was them people probably enslaved for? This is only the 1700s. This is only the 1700s. Okay? So, oh, oh, them was Africans. This war was the strongest challenge to European dominance in North America by indigenous people during the colonial period and nearly destroyed the Carolina colony. Eventually, colonists established a shanky peace after forming an alliance with the Cherokees. In 1716, many American Indians left the area moving south or deeper into the interior. Okay, now I just read this. I'm going to come back. Well, matter of fact, no, I'm going to finish this shit out. Fuck this. It's saying the year following the Yamasee War, Carolina settlers attempt to maintain the peace by limiting American Indian slavery. Low country packers focus on increasing their labor force, though the purchase of enslaved African. Yeah, here we go. It's saying they it's telling you that they stopped enslaving them. Now, check this out. Understand this. If they if they stop if they stop enslaving them, then who was the people that was dead? Because they didn't tell you that they defeated or the people was decimated or born. So what happened to them? They continued to be enslaved. The ones they was born against or they born against, the ones that was enslaved continued to be enslaved. They say Africans, they say who were arriving in great numbers through Port Charles. Now that's something you have to look up. Port Charles. I already looked a little bit that up though, but I gotta go further with it. Now check this out. Read this. We're going to go back into this. Read this. Now, this is another clue that should set off an alarm in your head. All right? Now, remember, the Geechee and the Gola. Remember, they're telling you that the Gola came from South Carolina. I mean, came from Africa. They, you know, but it's telling you that they was already in South Carolina. Now, this is a this is an article which they telling you a lot of the truth. But if you don't know what the Yamasis look like, if you don't look like, know what these people look like, then you don't assume that these people was Negroes. All right, so boom. So check this out. And this time I'm gonna, I'm gonna catch these people on a good lot. Watch this. So low packers focused on increasing their labor force through the purchase of enslaved Africans who were arriving in great numbers through Port So Watch me catch these people out here. Check this out. It's say by the late 18th century. Now they're telling you that they didn't bring Africans into the late 18th century. 
as the number of African arrival outnumbered enslaved American Indians, the census stopped differing between Africans and American Indian slaves. The Negroes increasingly became synonymous with slaves in low country. Now check this shit out, y'all. <laughs> check this shit out. Where are we at, right? We are in Carolina, right? To say by the late 18th century, right? They saying that the word African and American Indian slave and Negro increasingly became synonymous, right? Now remember, they was already calling people Negroes in the 1500s. So who was the Negroes that was already here? If they was calling you Negroes in the 1500s, and Christopher Columbus is the only, they the only Spanish, why would the English call Africans Negroes? If they was, like, that's what I'm saying, you gotta really think when you're doing this research, okay? Check this out. The Yamasi War helped solidify an early sense of white racial, great racial unity between planters, elite, and non-slave holders. Um, settlers in Carolina. White settlers began adopting a siege mentality in 17th century against the multiple threat of American Indian attacks, slave rebellions, and attacks from Spanish Florida in contrast of the colony of Virginia had fewer frontier of conflict, instead struggled more with the class conflict in between whites as well as the slave rebellions in the Carolina. All right? So now look, at this point in time, we don't know. We at the at this one at this point in time, one who doing the research can more than assume that these slaves was aborigines. More that they listen this article. That's why I had to read this article because I didn't find. I never found this one right. And this is some deep stuff right here. All right, so let's let's finish it up. It say all right. It say tension flare regularly between poor whites and elite white slave holders. Say part of say particularly a large plantation owner and now them, them poor whites were slaves, okay, and and, and white slave holders. All right. It say plantation owners in low country put small non-slave holder farmers into a back country, but Carolina generally avoided violent class confliction with politically upheld up. up have evil between whites and multiple sources of conflict with enslaved Africans, American Indians, in the earliest Carolina colony generated a sense of white unity across classes. Now, slave holding white also played an essential role in, 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 in now check this out. All right, no, let me finish it out. It say in the structure of the low country slave society by working as an overseer on plantation and participating in slave patrol to capture runaways to prevent rebellions. All right, so you can gather pretty much gather your own story from that. All right, so this all kind of relates to what we reading here and Thomas Peter. All right, they already had slaves in in in, in the Carolinas in the 1700s. All right, they telling you that they ain't bring nobody in to. They telling you now. Let me see what. Let me see something. This has got to be some type of organization. Now, let me see some. Check this out. Um, so let's we'll say Africans. They want to say Africans. Let me see, some. Let me see what this is. So we can catch them in lives at this point in time. Now look. So look at this right here. See this? Them are motherfucking aborigines, man. Them are aborigines, man. Them are aborigines. You understand? These right here are aborigines. You understand? Straight up. Just because they come into South Carolina. See, these people are confused themselves. Because now they now let's check this out. Listen to this. This right here. They going to use the transatlantic slave trade to basically to, to basically use the African slave trade. Now, they just told you in the last story that the Africans did not come into the 1800s. But let's just read a little bit of it. Since I'm touching on Thomas Peter and I got a little bit more time, I'm going to go back. I promise I'm going to make that fourth video on the Maroons and Sierra Leone. All right? Just give me some time. I'm going to make that one. But I wanted to touch on this Thomas Peter because when I seen the picture, people, was, I didn't really know 
who he was. People were saying that he was um. This is Darlene Williams. She said, Kwanda and Kwanli, whatever, they say came from Nigeria. They said an African was, and was kidnapped and was taken to West Indies, all right? They say from there, he was taken to England, not America. They say this photo of such and such, they say he is from Guyana and he is also taken from my country. They say this is not his hair. He is a African Negro. It say, get your people facts straight. It say, both men was kidnapped from Africa as a teenager and brought to West Indies, not America. This is my history, people, not yours. Google them and find the facts. All right, so this is your history, right? So, I just proved that this history is wrong. Everything she gets said. Okay, she said that only thing, the only thing we could find that's factual was she said that he was kidnapped from Nigeria, which some of the articles say West Africa, some will say not. But I just proved to you in Carolina that they, were, they didn't bring no Africans there, according to them. Now, they using these stories, they do trying to use these stories parallel. They're using the Indian slavery parallel with Africa. So anything that sedates the, the first, when they saying, look, Check this shit out, right? Look, I'm going to read some of this, man. I got a little bit more time. Let's get with this, man. Fuck it. This ain't that long. They say African most likely, okay? Most likely. Most likely is not a factual state. Okay, let me get some water, man. Hold on for a second. I'm going to go in this shit. Now check this shit out. We're going to go in this. And we're going to show you how people be bullshitting us even with this read material, all right? So African most likely first arrived in this area that would be South Carolina in 1526. All right, now 1526 and African first arrived. When did these Santos come in? Came in the 1500s. You said there was already black people there. Okay, and Verrazano. So, that's a lie right there. It says, as part of the Spanish expedition from the Caribbean. Now, remember, the Spanish already had Negroes. This is 1526, right here. 1526. Now, check this out. I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to debunk this whole thing right here since we're doing this. 1526. Where do we go? We go right back here. We use their information against them because this is to show you that none of the stuff that they showing you is factual, okay? So you can you need to do a research and, and, and come up with your own theory at this point in time. Alright? It say they all go next this is Columbus, fourteen ninety two. Okay, so that's thirty that ain't even thirty years like well, no, 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 it is it's just like thirty two years later. Figure this is fifteen twenty six, fourteen ninety two. That's fifteen years later, right? So from 15 years later, he said it was 8 million people there on that land. So in 15, in 30 years, 32 years, they was all decimated. Okay. It said they can easily be commanded and made to work, to sow and to do whatever might be needed to build towns and, to and be taught to wear clothes. Now, for him to even say that means that he already did conducted this experiment for him to even make this statement. All right, so I'm going to come back here. So it's a 15, 20, so we know that's a fucking lot. It's a as part of the Spanish expedition. Remember, Herman de Santos didn't bring no Africans. Herman de Santos, he was an explorer. He was bring, coming. He went coming. In. See, the only people that, that would be bringing slaves are people who were settlers, okay? Most of these Spanish colonies was really not settling. They were just coming here to take the land or, or take from the land. They didn't want the land. They wanted to take from the land. So when they tell you, oh, the Spanish are oh, ex uh, ex expedition, uh, expedition me an ex explorer. So that don't mean there was no settlers. They were just coming here to find gold and take take shit from the land. That was it. Along the way, they found people that they can use as the booty and all this other stuff that you hear, okay? So it's say the Spanish expedition from the Caribbean, say for the next century, ongoing struggles between Spanish, French, and indigenous people, indigenous groups in this re region involved enslaved Africans who accompanied and sometimes escaped from 
the European arrival, say after the English settled Carolina in 1670, they launched a plantation economic e economy that increased, relied on the slave. See, listen, listen, y'all, listen to, me. listen to. Me. See, see, research would would research would liberate you from this bullshit, okay? Because number one. They want you to believe that the Spanish, French, all of these people were going to Africa bringing Africans here. This is what they want you to believe. When that is clearly not the fucking truth. That's not the truth. I just told you one of the, the Spanish, the Spanish that people rely on is Columbus. Columbus said these people can be taught the work. Okay? Then you start when he take the people back. What do you see? They're called Negroes. Okay, now. Look, man, let me get show you. Let me show y'all. Let me show you something else. You know, because I still got this shit up there. So, but, I, I mean, you know, I got to continue to go on. We're going to use Zach Forbes because he is a source, okay? And what I think, let me just put this out there, too. What I think with Zach Forbes was, when Zach, Zach Forbes was amazed from the Native American, right? So, when he first started doing his research, search, he started finding out, like, all right, boom. He started in the Midwest with the with the North Dakota, but then he started finding out that the real Indians was black because he's like, hold up, they didn't find these people until almost three hundred years after they've been here. So where are the people who they encountered? Then what he was thinking to himself just didn't make no sense. But as he did his research, he knew the fucking truth. He he knew the truth. He knew the truth. He just don't want to tell you that the Indians and Africans looked similar. He, he can't, he just didn't want to tell you that. And then you can't even tell an African from an Indian. You couldn't even tell. They only know certain, they only knew certain things according to their culture. Let's check this shit out, right? Now, we see right here. They say, or, they say, all right, they say the Eastern Seaboard, Terra Nova, they say more, whatever. They say Jack Forbes, he's showing his book. It say how many so-called Native American Indians were sold into slavery in Africa and in Europe. But what was that lady name? Miss Williams? It say this is the opposite direction in which we was taught the slave trade. Now why would he just say that? Oh, he's lying. Oh, he's lying. Oh, he, oh, he made that up. No, because research led him to believe that. You haven't led yourself up to that research or to this point the way you can agree with him. It say the trade went in. It say the Native Americans are Indians or Indians were classified as Negroes. Now he's saying this in the 1500s. What did we just read in this right here? Listen, what did we just read right here? He's telling you by the, the 1800s that the Africans and the American Indians was they was already calling people here Negroes before any Africans got here. Okay, that just shows you that right there. I mean, if if if, if you can comprehend it. Okay, if you can't comprehend it, then you don't understand. Alright, so it shows you boom. It say it's a Negroes and Blacks in the Slave Book of Seville, Spain, and elsewhere. And elsewhere. It says on page 29, he says slaves from Terra Nova show up on the slave market of Seville and Valencia very soon after 1500. For example, Valencia during the period 1500. All right, so we read all it. Boom, boom, boom. It say they were classified as Negroes. And where did these Spanish people get these, these Indians from? <laughs> Hold up, let me go back to it. Where did they get the Indians from? What did Columbus, 1492, 15, 1501? That's um, 10 years, 8, 9 years difference. So where did they get these Indians from? Right here on the island of Espanol. And when he brought them there, they was classified as Negroes. All right? So, first, let's go down a little further. All right, so... Say after the Indian, I mean, no, after the English settled in Carolina in 1670, it was already people there, it was already black people there. That's the reason why you get um, John o Overly and you get Arnold Martinez and you get all these people that's making images of these actors. They were still black Indians there. That's the reason why they were still taking images. And this is what Jack Ford ran across. Because he started saying, well, damn, Negro was a space. He had to, he had to figure that out. 
That Negro is not an English word. And why would they call somebody an African a Negro in the 1800s if they didn't have no Spanish influence? The Spanish was calling people Negroes in the island of Espanol. Where was they shipping people out? The West Indies. They already tell you that, okay? They already tell you that. I don't even need to go no further, but let's just deal, let's deal with the rest of this, man. So it say, um, transatlantic slave trade by 1708. It say the number of enslaved Africans and their descendants in South Carolina had grown to the point that colony feared a black population majority with some temporary function, you know, flunking and function. It say this black population majority would continue in the colony and later state, state of South Carolina until the Great Migration in the mid 20th century. 20th century. Okay. It say by the late 16th century, um, English traders established direct ac access to the transatlantic slave trade, particularly in West and Central Africa through the Royal African Company. And this is something else you need to look up. It say in other trading companies, Barbados was a major port for English transatlantic trade. Now they telling you Barbados when they was already telling you, they telling you Barbados, right? Now check this out. They're telling you Barbados was a fucking port, right? When they was already telling you that they was taking people. <sighs> I keep showing up, guys. Because people don't like to do research. Where they say in the first column, 1637. This is Massachusetts. This is all the way across. This is further than fucking South Carolina. In the colonies of Massachusetts, the Pinkwats were the first slaves, but they also would not endure the yoke, and they were sent to Bermuda in exchange for Negroes. Why would they exchange the people? Why would they call the people Negroes in the house? Because that's where Columbus was at. Columbus gave them that term. That's the reason why the English call him that. So. The the people the people who was in the the ones that was in the Caribbean that was traded was called Negro as well as I guess you know what think of it like this all right they saying that the Negro because we are the same people okay they saying that the people in the Caribbean look just like the people here they like damn like they so they said fuck it they all Negro fuck it well, once they they all Negro because they the Caribbean it was already Negroes what did Columbus say Columbus was the one who came there. So Columbus was the one who had to apply that term, okay? Now, let's say, let's say um, they were sent to Bermuda, okay? Now, this was, this was where? This was Barbados, right? Let's see, let's see where the fuck Barbados I think we already went into this, but let's see. Barbados. So it's all the way over here. All the way over here, Barbados. Alright. So let me see. Where is the Bahamas? The Bahamas right here. Alright. The Bahamas and this is Bermuda. So they was already doing it. So it was already black people here. And they would just take these people here and then take the people from here back to these countries. And remember the people, they considered all because remember the Spanish was here first. The, Sp the Spanish was here first. So the Spanish were the people who put the tags on these people in this area of them being Negroes. When they got here, they were, when the English got there in 1655 or whatever time they, they took over these islands, they was already calling these people Negroes. Okay? They was already calling them Negroes. You know what I'm saying? And I guess because it might have been some identifiable people who look similar to them that came from Africa, then they applied that term on them as well. But the term started here from the Spanish. When you look up the Spanish, why would the Spanish bring slaves here when they weren't trying to set up a colony? They was only trying to take the fucking gold. It tells you that. When you read Columbia, they you will only want slaves to set up the colony, to set up a colony if you plan on staying here. 
They weren't playing with standing. They were just trying to get gold and get other riches and stuff. That was it. The British had a totally different idea. They wanted to come in for the land. The Spanish didn't want to lead in land. The British wanted to lead in land. That's the reason why they came in instead of plantations. Most of the plantations, they had packs with the indigenous people here to be indigenous servants, okay? But the, when they was warming with a lot of these tribes and they captured them, instead of putting them inside the Western land, they would just send them off to another, another plantation that was held by the English. And then they would sit there until they would say, well, all right, He's calm or he or, or the person would escape again and then he would still come into the brick because he would end up warring with them or being uh, um you know what I'm saying being a soldier. So alright, so alright, so let's say for England uh seventeenth century, early eighteenth century from one third to one one half of the enslaved Africans in Carolina came from the English West Indies, okay? Now, let's say by the early 18th century, however, the port in St. Charles, Charlestown renamed Char Charlton. Hmm. So that's where Charlton came from, Charlestown. Charlestown was named Charleston. And this is how these motherfuckers was, was creating these words. Like you see like last names or whatever, Charleston, Charlestown, Charleston, 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 Charleston. Okay, it's saying in 1783, it's they began to receive larger number of enslaved men, women, and children arriving directly from West and Central Africa. It's say, I, uh, I say, whatever, man. I, you know what? I ain't even going no further on this, or whatever, but we already read pretty enough, man. I don't need to go no further on this, or whatever. Um, there probably is some good research to probably take from this. But overall, like I said, I'm not buying it. They already said that they weren't bringing people into the 1800s. What happened to the millions of people who was here? Where are they at? Where are the million people that was on the coast? Where they at? Where they at? They was already colonized. You had think of it like this too. Think of this too. If your people think think of this, right? Let's say you was one of the tribes of the people who who freed yourself, right? Or, or you worked under their rule or whatever, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Let's say you was one of the one of the blacks that did that, right? You may have never came in contact with a fucking African. You know what I'm saying? So how the fuck would you be ever be an African? Because if you was originally indigenous aborigine of this land and you was freed on your own will, you was never on a plantation, then you would have never met none of these people who was on it. So you have to take that into consideration too. That indigenous service was free people walking around. They had papers. They had permission. They have permission to be free. You understand what I'm saying? They was like, oh, he's one of us. That's the reason why he's one of us. They was worried about the hostile. You understand what I'm saying? But when they figure out, when they figured that out, like I said, if you was here in the 1500, you work with these people, you got your own land and you was able to live and you was able to eventually own, probably own slaves because the British was giving you some of these people too to control so that's how a lot of that shit came. But when these people figure out so that we, we can mix in with these people and just take over the tribes, when they probably started seeing that how these Europeans and these black these um black aborigines was getting along and how these children was coming out, they probably just started mating and started doing all that. And then also like you know, you already know they was raping people as they were bringing the slaves in and doing all types of things to them. So you already know what time it is. But nonetheless, though, man, that's that's pretty much on Thomas Peters and some further information on um, Native American, I mean, or uh, Aborigine slaves that was in um, Carolina. So you got to do your research on that. You got to form your own perspective because there's so much information in the line. One people, like, for example, even on this right here, right? This telling you, this telling you that Africans arrived in South Carolina in 1526. This is a fucking lie, man. It's no, I have, none of my research that I've found, I haven't found nothing about no Africans coming to here until 16, 1619. And that even, that is even a fucking lie. Okay? And remember, Spanish, the Spanish is just riding around. They, so Spanish was doing explorations. Think of it like this. Think of it like this, right? Uh, exploration or explorer is someone who's trying to go out and see and explore different things. But they was their plan of exploring wasn't to keep the land. Their plan of exploring was to to find tr treasures and gold and, and precious stuff to take back to their land. 
Okay, so in that process, you honestly believe that they was riding around with hundreds of, of slaves that they had to feed? Think about it. Think about it. They, so you, they was just riding around with hundreds of slaves. All right, well, we just going to let these slaves off here. No, they was coming with their men, finding new people, and then forming, and forming some type of relationship with them, and then crossing them and take overtaking them. The same way they was doing, the same way when I read the story about the Maroons. So you got to read. Like I said, a lot of stuff is historical information. It's just up to you because when you read, you because you have to, you'll run into a brick wall. You'll read one article or one book. This one book said one thing. Then you read this book and this one book is not consistent with that book. So what are you left to do? You are left to fill in the blanks while doing your own research, whether it's empirical, quantitative, qualitative, um, or however you um, derive your information. But just understand this, the English do not use the word Negro. When you see the word Negro, it's a Spanish word. It's because the English was robbing the Spanish ships and how that's how that word was passed. Also, the word was passed because the English took over the most parts of the Caribbean and the Spanish was there first and the Spanish was already calling them Negroes because it's not an English word. You have to look at what is the English word that they describe to call black people and you will see it some more. You will see it's more just do your research. What do the English use to describe um so-called melanated people? Moors. That's it. That's it. And they was probably calling them people moors too, but they was like, nah, these Negro. And they probably was confused too. They probably like, damn, well, this is a more okay, but they call them a Negro. So like I said, there's a lot of information on this. You gotta do your own research on this. And you gotta see it, man. You gotta see it for yourself, man. So pretty long video. The been, been in been in the rabbit hole for a minute. I'm gonna let this one go. Um, I gotta do a paper tomorrow, so I'm probably not gonna do a video. Probably another video this week. But I'm gonna get that maroon. Matter of fact, you know what? That maroon joint is. I, I got. I, I already comprehend that, but I just gotta touch on that. Though. So, with that being said, time to this one. Peace.